All right, so uh, I've what I've done here is I put together a little method uh, to create a list, put some numbers in the list, and we're going through the list uh, in a backwards look uh, way, and we're looking for the number two, and if we find the number two, we're basically removing it. So I'm going to print the list before and after. That's the before. And so it looks like I've succeeded in removing the number two. Now, we can also accomplish this same thing by using an iterator. And so we can create an iterator on the list, and we can go through the iterator. Now, if we choose to use the iterator, we cannot mix using the iterator with the list remove method. The reason why is that if we're going through the list with an iterator, and all of a sudden we call the list remove method, the iterator is unaware that the underlying list has suddenly changed. So it might work, but it might quite likely crash the iterator. So my point is that if you're going to use the iterator and you want to do a remove, you must use the iterator's remove method in order to remove any elements. You can't use an iterator, iterate through the list, and then use the list remove. Likewise, if you have some other type of data structure like a set, if you're parsing the set with an iterator, then if you want to remove an element, you can't use the sets remove method. You need to use the iterator's remove method. So to give you an example of what I mean, here is a piece of code that is using uh, a an iterator to try to parse a list. And instead of using the iterator remove, I've used the set remove here, which you're not supposed to do. And you'll notice that if I submit this, I'm going to get a concurrent modification exception. And what that means is you've modified the underlying set while you're iterating on it. So the use of the sets remove method is not allowed here. Instead, you must use the iterators remove method, which will work much better. 